Ah, Thanksgiving leftovers. Something that uh, I think usually people miss the mark on, and today we're gonna hit that mark. Okay, so today we're talking about Thanksgiving leftovers. I know there's a bunch of Thanksgiving recipes out there for leftovers, but nine times out of 10, it's like a sandwich with mashed potatoes and cranberries. Enough is enough. We don't always have to just do that. There are other options. It just requires a little bit of technique, a little bit of creativity, and the urge to not waste ingredients, which hopefully you're in that boat. So with all that said, let's take a little adventure and make these, shall we? All right, so naturally when you're dealing with Thanksgiving leftovers, you'll probably land on breakfast first. I've got a really easy one, savory stuffing waffles. So obviously you'll need some leftover stuffing, three cups or 470 grams to be exact. Now just crush that up with your hands, crack and beat together two whole large eggs until evenly mixed, separately, obviously. Then grate one cup or 85 grams of some nice Parmigiano Reggiano into your stuffing. Add your eggs, oh, and uh, don't forget to season with salt. Anyway, mix until thoroughly incorporated. From there, all you have to do is heat up a waffle iron, spray that guy with cooking oil, and look, if it's really big, then this is only gonna make one giant waffle for the record. Add your stuffing mix to your preheated waffle iron, close it and let it cook, checking intermittently until you get a beautifully crisp and golden brown waffle. I mean, look at that. That's it. I mean, that's pretty much it. All you gotta do is plate it up, top it with a nice hot fried egg, drizzle that with some leftover gravy. Don't go skimpy here, put a lot. Then hit it with some fresh cracked black pepper and enjoy in its beautiful simplicity. I just realized that we forgot to do a yolk, uh, runny yolk part, so that's okay. We'll just do it right here, okay? Yep, yeah. There, are you happy of all you people who fetishize egg yolks, you nasty? Nasty people. You're literally just pressing it into a waffle iron. Gravy on top, it makes a whole lot of sense to me. I swallowed an air bubble. Oh, oh God. <sighs> Okay, I'm better. Paper room just has to like watch me break down. People always have a ton of leftover stuffing because it's just not the main event. And if you have any leftovers whatsoever, this is the way you should handle it. All right, next let's talk leftover turkey. More specifically, Tom Kagai, or Tom Ka Turkey, I guess. Snag yourself a nice medium sized sauce pot, add two cups of turkey stock or chicken stock, get one to two stalks of lemongrass, bruise that guy up, and rough chop it into evenly sized pieces. Rough chop six Thai chilies, slice a three inch knob of galangal. If you can get it, you can also sub ginger, because I'm assuming a lot of you might not be able to find that. And last, you'll need five kefir lime leaves, which unfortunately I lost the ones that I had in the freezer, so you can totally sub like three or four regular lime peel from an actual lime. Not the same, but it'll add a fragrant element that's reminiscent of kefir. And last, two shallots, rough chopped as well. Add all that to your broth, bring that up over medium high heat just until it comes to a boil, and then immediately reduce to low and gentle simmer for about 12 minutes. Then straighten out all of the solids, add your fragrant broth back to the pan, bring it back up to heat, and add six dried shiitake mushrooms and one pack of straw or hanshimeji type mushrooms. Let that simmer, stirring occasionally until the shiitake are rehydrated and the hanshimeji are cooked through. You can also use button mushrooms. From there, just mix in one can of full fat coconut milk and season it with one tablespoon or 15 grams of palm sugar or light brown sugar, three tablespoons or 45 milliliters of fish sauce, and three tablespoons or 45 milliliters of fresh lime juice. Mix all that together until thoroughly combined. Finally, shred or chop up half a pound of leftover turkey meat, that can be breast or thigh, whatever you like. Add it to your hot soup and let it sit for about five minutes or until everything is nice and hot. Taste your broth and adjust seasoning with fish sauce, lime juice, and sugar. You really wanna balance this out, right? It's all about balance with this. It should be a nice funky salty with heavy acidity and a light sweetness in the background. Anyway, pour your broth with its veggies and meat into a bowl, top it with some crispy shallots, a lovely generous drizzle of chili oil, and some nice fresh cilantro leaves. And that is how you treat leftover turkey. So essentially we've got a Tom Kagai here, except it's with turkey, so I guess it's a Tom Kirky. Tom Kirky. Tom Kirky. There we go. That's what this is. So, inspired by Tom Kagai, you got the lime juice, the fish sauce, the chili oil, all these different sort of perfectly balanced flavors. Oh man. Oh god, I, I breathed it in. I messed it up. It was so good, I just started inhaling it and it went into my throat, in my windpipe. This calmed me down. This soothed my soul. I feel like I'm in a meadow. And I'm just kind of walking with a slight sway in my hips, holding in, but a small fart. This is so shockingly easy to put together. If you can find the ingredients, this is so worth it and so satisfying, especially for the time of the year. You use up your leftover turkey, and this is really just as good as any other Tom Kagai. It's just got a little bit of a turkey twang to it. Yet another item of our Thanksgiving meal refreshed. Now, I know I said I was gonna avoid a sandwich, but I couldn't stay away from a beautiful Thanksgiving croque monsieur. Monsieur? Monsieur? Yeah, you know, we know how it goes when I try to 
pronounce. So to make this, start off with a small sauce pot and add three tablespoons or 42 grams of unsalted butter. Heat that over medium heat. Then once that's melted, add in three tablespoons or 28 grams of all-purpose flour. Whisking occasionally for about one minute, then slowly whisk in one and three quarters of a cup or 437 milliliters of whole milk. Keep whisking constantly and heating until that's nice and thickened. Then add one and a half cups or 120 grams of grated Gruyere cheese. Keep whisking and heating until it's completely and totally melted. Then turn off the heat and whisk in half a cup of leftover gravy if you have it and season it to taste with salt and pepper and a small pinch of fresh grated nutmeg if you got it. Now get yourself two slices of bread and add any leftovers you want in there, anything you want. Here I added some nice grated cheese, melted that a little with a torch for the culinary hype beast moment, some leftover roasted butternut squash, some Thanksgiving turkey breast, a nice generous drizzle of gravy, some mashed potatoes on the other slice, some more cheese, then crown your king, get yourself a pan, add in a little knob of butter, and heat that over medium heat until the butter is melted and bubbling, add in your sando, and toast it beautifully on both sides. It should be about two to three minutes per side. Once that's nice and toasted, place it on a foil-lined baking sheet, cover the top with your creamy Mornay cheese sauce you made, a fatty grating of extra gruyere cheese and pop that bad boy under the broiler until the cheese is melted about two to three minutes then take your absolute unit of a sandwich slice that brother in half and watch a cheese pull that'll make you notice that you ain't never seen two pretty best friends when you take that first bite that's a stupid tiktok reference i don't know so we have a sandwich but not just any sandwich we've got essentially a, a <laughs> at this point, I'm not even gonna try to pronounce things correctly because if I if I don't try, you get mad at me. If I do try, you get mad at me. If I joke about it, you get mad at me. So really what I've learned is you just gotta be yourself sometimes. Cheesy, yummy boy sando. This is inspired by a croque monsieur. You could add a fried egg and turn it into that of a madame and it's still cheesy. I took a bite and the sun went away. This sandwich hit me like... The croque monsieur, the croque madame, those two sandwiches, a beautiful creation, a beautiful, simple French creation. In my opinion, one of the top three sandwiches of all time. But this fits the bill, and you can use up any of your Thanksgiving leftovers just in this sandwich, and then cover it in Mornay sauce and cheese. If that's not wrong, then I don't know what's right. Okay, so I saved the best for last. Fried potato balls, which are a million times easier than you might imagine. In a bowl, add three cups or 750 grams of leftover mashed potatoes, along with one cup or 95 grams of grated Gouda cheese, one bunch of thinly sliced chives, salt and pepper to taste. Mix that all together, and then remember that you actually completely forgot the bacon, so separately get three thicky slices of either bacon or pancetta, rough chop that into chunks, then cook in a pan over medium heat, stirring occasionally until you get beautifully browned little crispy bits of bacon. Drain that out of its fat, place your crispy meat on a board, and rough chop until you get fine little pieces. Add that to your mashed potato mixture, and mix that together until well incorporated. Finally, roll those bad boys into evenly sized two-inch balls. Remember to always keep your balls even, no matter what. Now once you have your balls of mashed potato, whisk together two whole eggs in a small bowl, and in a separate bowl, add about one and a half cups or 180 grams of panko breadcrumbs, or as autocorrect likes to say, panic breadcrumbs. For each ball, you're gonna roll them in the egg, coat the entire darn thing. Don't get stingy here. Then take your egg-coated ball and roll it into the panko breadcrumbs. Completely coat every single side, leave no wet spots, then rinse and repeat the process with all of your mashed potato balls until each and every one of them are coated beautifully. Get yourself a pot, fill it with about three inches of high heat cooking oil like canola, then heat that oil to 375 degrees Fahrenheit or 190 degrees Celsius. Once that reaches temp, drop in about five to six balls at a time and fry for two to three minutes or until they are nicely browned and crispy like this guy right here. Immediately remove from the oil, fish them out using a spider, place them on a wire rack set over a baking sheet to drain and cool down a little bit. And of course, repeat with the rest of your balls. Now before we serve these, we can also make a quick little spicy cream by combining a quarter cup of sour cream, a quarter cup of mayonnaise, two teaspoons of smoked paprika, one tablespoon of sriracha, and a tablespoon of spicy chili crisp. Oh, and of course a little bit of salt to taste. Whisk all that together until thoroughly combined, spoon some of that lovely spicy sauce in a small ramekin, and get to dipping and flipping. Now, next, we have sort of like a croquette. It's a fried potato ball, mashed potato ball. Ah, so you dip it, a little bit of that sauce. Enjoy. Oh my God. Why was my deep so voice just now? Or my voice so deep just now. This is something else. First off, do you hear the crunch? This has been sitting for an hour. I cannot think of a better way to treat leftover mashed potatoes, okay? I'm tired of the whole like, oh, well, I'll just reheat them and that's it, fine, that's easy, but Whoa, you've already got half the work done for you. You just gotta mix something, put it in, and then put it in the oil and fry it and get crispy, delightful little balls of, they're perfect. Mm -hmm. Hold on, you ready for the kids? Ooh, you did something. To get the best shot, you really kind of have to have your back like this. <laughs> that's, a, that's me all day, yeah. You wanna know what else is full of big holiday birds and plump mashed potato balls? B-roll. <laughs> Alright guys, and 
that is it. So we made Thanksgiving leftovers. Now I broke this up into a couple different parts. You can obviously mix and match here, but the point that I'm trying to make is you can be as creative as you want with these leftovers. You already have a bunch of cooked ingredients. Don't just like throw them together in a sandwich. You already have half the work done. Maybe you never wanted to make Tom Kagai because you didn't want to cook the chicken and then shred it and this and that, but you already have the turkey cooked. So now all you gotta do is make the soup base. So you've already saved yourself half the time. Guys, take advantage of this moment, please, please. I, know, I feel very uh, passionate about this. I'm tired of the turkey sandwich thing. Anyway, with all that said, if you enjoyed this video or you learned something, leave a like, subscribe, and I will see you next time.